the fastest woman. Uh, has one come across yet? Yes, Greta Weitz. And as a matter of fact, her time was a record. And she was one of those people that was the first at ever running a marathon distance. What a chauvinist I am. What are we, four hours <laughs> since this? Of course we've had women come in. Of course. Well, listen. Of course. Out in when I heard that, the, uh, that CBS was looking for a female to... Um, take the desk at the CBS NFL today to replace Phyllis George. First week results for three or more than 200 NFL rookies. I, I just said, you know, God, I, I'd love to do that job. I mean, it was like, to me. What a powerful statement is Jane or nobody. And then to still not be hired after a director says Jane or nobody and network says Jane or nobody all because of the color of your skin and all because of the fear of the Southern response um, so much fear that the need was to bring on another co-anchor who was of the Caucasian um, background just to prevent there from being more Black people on the screen than white. And then still, even though it was Jane or nothing, she still had to prove herself with a six-week trial period. There were still discrepancies in her pay, being paid way less than everyone else. She had an agent who refused to submit her because they weren't looking for a Black. As they say, this woman has went through so much just to be able to pave a way. Um, and then ended up needing to, to be sued by her agency for commission, even though they refused to submit her three times. You know, issues with wearing hair naturally and... Uh, being unfairly fired three times and through all of this uh, paving that she's done for the the sports journalists and people of color and women of color specifically with black women journalists who are within the sports world today she also doesn't feel like she's acknowledged as much as she feel like she should be and I do think that maybe there isn't enough recognition for what this woman went through um to uh to open that door. But it was um, a very uh, fascinating dynamic since uh, obviously in the current day, um, they really, the work they have done has really been reflected in the um, current culture in which it's uh, very common for women to be in that position. And for someone um, of my age, I've grown up um, seeing women on Sports Center and on <clears throat> NFL Today on the sidelines um, as an avid sports watcher has become very normal for me. But I, it's obvious that much like most um, societal barriers, this was one that was um, quite um, intrinsic uh, within uh, this industry against um, these particular people, women, uh, women of color. And I thought that the piece had a really great sort of inspirational feel and um, educational component to it that uh, worked well because of, um, I thought Jane Kennedy's very um, accessible and relatable um, approach in her um, subject interview settings. I thought it really helped to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, sort of uh, not just uh, give you an insight to her, but into the industry itself and sort of uh, the big picture dynamics that went into her being a trailblazer in this um, industry. So I thought it was um, quite um, interesting, especially in the short amount of time. I thought they really packed in a lot within the 15 minutes. And I felt like uh, she really, uh, the piece really did a service to her, her work and her career. I really enjoyed listening to Jane's story, how she had a really difficult time trying to get her agent to get her that audition and how she had to go about it a different way to actually get the audition and then get the job. But that was only half the battle. Finding out, you know, the differences and how she was treated because she was a pioneer. She was the first black female sportscaster and how the networks kind of treated her about that. And, and the fact that she was paid a lot less was just absolutely appalling. It was also appalling to listen to back in that day how some of the other male newscasters, sportscasters, would speak about African-American athletes. It was, just, it was shocking. I mean, I know that the entertainment industry can be very, very brutal, but boy, was it really brutal back then. And this film was done so well, and it was so eye-opening. You know, we've come a long way, but it really wasn't that long ago that racism was just accepted um, in the media. And, you know, they had to add another white person just so that they could uh, keep viewers, uh, apparently. Um, so, yeah, that was eye opening to see just how it wasn't that long ago that that was going on. Um, I liked how this documentary only interviewed Jane. So the perspective was totally hers. The focus was entirely on Jane Kennedy. We didn't have anyone else's perspectives on her and her life and her experience, which I thought was a really smart choice um, for this story, especially. 
Um, I love the use of all the old footage. We could see Jane when she was a sports anchor in her element. Um, and also, you know, we saw the, the Super Bowl and what they did to her, um, completely cutting her out. And just hearing her heartbreak in her interview was also hard to hear. Um, and the fact that she only lasted about a year, it sounded like. Um, so that was disheartening, but then we see, I liked how the documentary added in all of the African American female sports anchors today and how they are thriving because of Jane Kennedy and her first role as a an sports anchor uh, as an African American female. And I thought that was really inspiring. Hearing something like this where you know, this woman is a trailblazer in multiple in multiple ways and that she had to fight so hard and go through so much to get the job in the first place after being told no and being told no and being told no. And that people were willing to say, like, I want her, like, that we're a part of the actual show, but that the landscape of it isn't what, you know, the network thought was acceptable or isn't what, you know, somebody else thought was acceptable that wasn't a part of that, like, day-to-day -day practice of, like, the producer or the, you know, co-acres or whoever else was involved who said, like, I want her or nobody. Hearing her story, having it be told, having it be recognized, and having it be like really, really showcased, I think is so incredible because it shows people the history. And when you see it more and more now in these days, women anchors, women of color that are anchors, and you, you see the visibility, I think it's so important to recognize and respect the people that came before that have helped make that possible. They also show this adorable old footage of her earlier years um, broadcasting and commercial, doing commercials and hosting other events. How she paved her own way and fought to stay relevant and help others in the way as well. Understanding their struggles and the intersectionality of their identities with being a black woman, a trailblazer in the sports world of white men, and um, just being a role model for those women that are still trying to get up there somehow.